Hi everyone. Now we are going to discuss about non-specific defense mechanism in which mainly we are going to discuss about mechanical barriers. Yes, the non-specific defense mechanism or non-specific defenses or the first line of defense against uh, the diseases. And these are not going to be directed against a particular pathogen. That means they are going to guard us against all infectious or infections regardless of their cause. So that's how it is also going to be the uh, main mechanism involved in the innate immunity. Where uh, take some plants and the lower animals majorly rely on this non-specific defense mechanism because they do not possess a second category of a specific defense mechanism that means our lymphocyte cells all these things okay and this non-specific defense mechanism mainly works against a wide variety of invaders what are these wide variety of invaders like all the types of microorganisms okay Innate immunity is going to consist of various types of barriers, barriers that prevent the entry of pathogens into the body. So what are those barriers? So let's see. Physical barriers which are also called as mechanical barriers, anatomical barriers and the second type is chemical barriers. The third one is the biological barriers and fourth one is the general barriers. So we have discussed all these uh, different types of the barriers in concern to the mechanism of innate immunity in the immunology topic. So if you are having any doubts regarding this one, you can go through this, go through the immunology subject. But here we are going to mainly discuss about the physical barriers or mechanical barriers which are also going to be considered as anatomical barriers okay so let's begin what are these physical barriers and or what are the mechanical barriers the skin and mucous membranes are the most important physical as well as the mechanical barriers as a first line defense mechanism again as the parasitic organisms yes the skin and the mucous membrane so here you know the skin is the one which is covering the throughout the outside of the body and inside all our internal organs and the tissues everything is going to be covered with a slime layer called as a mucous membrane so those two are going to be considered as the mechanical barriers or the anatomical barriers which are acting as a first line of defense so coming to the skin the skin consisting of the epidermis and the dermis is dry, acidic and has a temperature lower than 37 degrees Celsius. That is what the body temperature is. So these conditions are not favorable to the bacteria to grow. Obviously, if it is going to be of acidic and low temperature, the bacteria cannot grow. The resident normal flora of the skin also, that is the normal flora of the skin also acts as a potential fighter again as the harmful microbes or harmful microorganisms as invaders. In addition to these, that means normal flora, temperature, dry, acidic conditions, the dead keratinized cells that are going to be present make up the surface of the skin or continuously being slowed off that means removed off so that microorganisms that do colonize these cells are constantly being removed okay and even with these things the hair follicles and the sweat glands that we are having produce an enzyme called as lysozyme and some sort of toxic lipids that can kill the bacteria so this is how the sweat gland that is releasing uh, some sort of enzymes and some sort of toxic lipids are going to fight against as the bacteria and that's how they are removing them. And even the epithelial cells produce defenses and catholicidins to kill the microorganisms. See how many are there? The outer skin is going to be the dry, acidic and has a temperature lower which will not allow the growth. And our normal flora of the skin is not allowing the growth of the organism. 
and then the keratinizer cells of uh, that is dead keratinizer cells of the skin is going to be removed off such that these microorganisms which do colonize may also be removed and our hair follicles and the sweat glands are going to produce some sort of enzymes and toxic lipids which can also kill the bacteria isn't it and the epithelial cells that are present also going to produce some sort of uh, defenses and uh, catholicidin compounds which also kill the microorganism and below this epidermis you are going to have the dermis region in which some sort of langer hand cells that means immature dendritic cells phagocytic cells which are also involved in killing the microbes and after that they may be carried to the t lymphocytes to become the uh, that means uh, to begin what we call it as adaptive immune response again as them finally what is happening the intra epithelial so inside whatever are there the t lymphocytes b lymphocytes are associated with the epidermis and the mucous epithelium and these cells recognize the microbes common to the epidermis and mucous membranes and start immediate adaptive that is second type of the immune response and encounter these microbes so that's how the skin is going to be the good a mechanical barrier in the non specific defense mechanism okay so this here is a short notes of all the things that i told you the intact skin acts as a very effective physical and chemical barriers to parasitic invasion because of its outer thick keratinous sebaceous gland secretions a normal skin microbiota remove and slow down or inhibit the growth of micro organisms then what is the second mechanical barrier that we have gone going through is mucous membrane so the mucous membrane of the respiratory digestive and urinogenital system offer mechanical resistance against the micro organisms the epithelium and mucous secretions of the mucous membrane form a protective covering and trap many microorganisms and thereby resist their penetration okay and you know that the mouth is constantly bathed in saliva which has many inhibitory effects on many micro organisms and the high acidity of the stomach destroy micro organisms so that's how the mucosa of respiratory tract and tears are known to be toxic to many bacteria so here if you see this is the mucous membrane so which is going to line the body cavities that open to the exterior such as our respiratory tract gastrointestinal tract and the genital urinary tract isn't it and we know that this micro that is mucous membranes are composed of an epithelial layer so here you can see epithelial layer that secretes a compound called as a mucus and a connective tissue layer the mucus is going to act as a good physical barrier that is able to trap the microbes and this mucus also contains some sort of enzymes called as lysozyme which are able to degrade the bacterial peptidoglycan layer and it is also able to produce the secretory antibodies that is secretory IgA that is immunoglobulin that can prevent the microorganisms entry and after entry they can attach to the mucosal cells and trap them in the mucus layer okay in addition to this uh, mucus membrane the like the skin is constantly sloughing cells to remove microbes that have attached to the mucus membrane beneath this mucus membrane is mucosa associated lymphoidal tissue that contain uh, these t lymphocytes b lymphocytes all these things which are involved in the adaptive type of immune response and once they recognize the microorganisms has entered they will start of uh, uh, encountering them and removing them from the mucus membrane so this is how the mucus membrane is involved in uh, removing the microorganisms and that's how it is going to act as a barrier that is an anatomical or physical barrier 
in the process of non-specific defense mechanism. So in this non-specific defense mechanism, we had gone through the mainly mechanical barriers. So we had mainly two types of mechanical barriers that is one skin and the second one is the mucous membrane. So that's all about the non-specific defense mechanism mechanical barriers. Thank you.